Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. Okay, so I'm going to start with the rear shocks. Not for any particular reason. And I'll lose some fluid there. I definitely put in more fluid than I should have. I probably could have gone a good millimeter or two from the top and that would have been fine. Uh, but again, it's better not to have any air get in. So let's see. Exercise the shock a couple times and let it go. And it looks like I'm getting maybe 50%, maybe 75% rebound, but that's a really slow rebound. Okay, I'm going to try getting a little bit of fluid out there. Keep an eye on where that hole is, kind of point it up. Loosen your cap. Compress your shock. Tighten it back up again. You're going to see some oil vent. I definitely recommend reading those directions carefully on page 31. This is kind of a process. Just like getting the shock length correct, this is important. mainly important that you have them equal that's the first important thing <clears throat> okay. if one reacts differently than the other then you're going to get unusual suspension handling so let's try rear number two Those are a little different. And I think I know how I did it differently. I mean, if you leave it long enough, it will eventually come out completely, but it's a matter of how quickly. There we go. Those appear to be reacting fairly equally. I would estimate they're in the 25% rebound range. Okay, fronts. Set those aside. So what I'm doing is I'm screwing the cap partway on and then I'm slowly pushing the piston up with one of my fingertips and tightening down the cap the rest of the way. That has almost vapor locked the uh, may not get a rebound action with the progressive 
shock setup. And it is almost profound. You can really feel a difference. You wouldn't think you would with such small shocks, but... Definitely feel a difference. Let me try the other one and see if I get it. If it's different. I'm not going to collapse the piston this time on this one. These shocks just don't rebound the same way. Definitely have a different feel. Make sure all these caps, top and bottom, are set up right. Make sure that the springs are all at the same level. Or the um, uh, the shock adjusters, the preload adjusters are all at the top. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little mark on all of these. This may not last because of the shock fluid and whatnot. But we'll see. I think that's pretty easy to see. So now, before I forget, put the cap back on. If you are using these TLR fluids, be careful not to over tighten these caps. They have a habit of splitting and then it forever leaks. Just make it snug. Do not tighten it down. This little box turned out to be the perfect size for these springs. And you'll see the numbers engraved on the top of the spring. Um, in this case, you'll see 25 dash. I mean, 2.5-2.8. And uh, so you know those are, they're all the same, but um, still you want to know where to look for those. Okay, now these all, the springs are a little loose. You see that? So what we want to do is we want to start by turning down our spring compressor until we get rid of that. And we'll just point it to one side. This is another place the caliper comes in handy. Uh, front to rear is not important, left to right is, so we want to make sure that we've got the same amount of preload. That's about 2.35, 2.57, so let's dial that one more. There we go. So now that I've got those equal, this makes a good place to to start. So what I'll do is I'll put the the uh, little colored mark that I made um, facing outwards on each of them, 
because I've kind of pre-balanced them. So now I can, you know, do an extra turn, two turns, four turns, whatever, and replicate that on the opposite side of the car and have a reasonable assurance that I'm going to get the same result. And uh, same thing with the fronts. So now we need to snap in our little eyelets. These we are going to use the handy techno wrench. So that's a slightly doesn't quite fit there. But it should fit here. Hopefully that's may not be far enough. Well, this thing is handy most of the time. Looks like I'm going to have to go to the good old pair of pliers. Remember the mark, I need to put these on opposite directions so those marks are going to be useful. Otherwise, I'll have to change everything. So that is our front left, and this is our front right. This is a nice arrangement for these uh, shock absorbers, the way they're set up. Um, these, uh, these ball studs are threaded. So we use our wrench. I think it's actually the next size up. Yep. There we go. And so these are threaded on one side and that allows us to screw these onto a stud so we don't need a separate bolt and or a washer out here or anything like that. So uh, rears, I'm gonna set those aside. Get the car over here. Just throw this little cardboard box under here. So now we need to know how many spacers we need and uh, because we need spacers here and spacers down here. I'm going to go ahead and show you on the sheet where this is. It's uh, right here and here where it says shims under shock, lower and upper. So for our rear shocks, we have one millimeter spacer at the lower and a two millimeter at the upper and uh, over here we have one millimeter at the lower and four millimeter at the upper for the fronts so ones and then two and four i'm going to go ahead and make note of that on my sheet which I've been doing is I've gone through this entire build anytime there's been something that is a handling change like whether or not I'm running the servo saver the thickness of the top deck um, the diff position etc all of those little handling issues I have been checking against the build sheet and then recording what I'm setting up as far as my car so now we need some bolts for the top and then our spacers. Now you might want to order yourself some aluminum spacers. We have a lot of um, plastic spacers I believe that are provided, um, but uh, 
I prefer to use aluminum spacers. It's a matter of precision. Plastic spacers can crush over time and they become less accurate. Uh, after a while, they really have very little meaning and you're better off just getting the right ones to begin with. I mean, getting aluminum ones from the get-go and then you always know how what your settings are. So, uh, let me get my bolt size here. So, M3 by 10 for the fronts. And M308s for the rear because we're using four. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the titanium hardware. So, I need four one millimeter spacers. two twos and two fours. I'll go ahead and yeah, I'll just use those. That will work. So I'm going to use for the fours. I'm going to use a pair of twos, and then I'm going to use another pair of twos for either side of the rear, and then uh, four one millimeter spacers for the lowers. So. Let's, uh, now we need to know what our shock positions are, which holes. In the shock tower. Some of these can be, things can be hard to spot. They are all in the uh, number two, and the rear is also two, so the middle hole. And it looks like they are both using the upper mounting hole, which we have as a stock setting. So let's start by putting a one millimeter spacer over that grub screw. Let's slide a 12 millimeter through here. There we go. Put on a pair of two millimeter spacers. Now, with our little colored spot facing outward, okay, same thing on the right side. So our mark facing outward. Again, that's just a starting point. OK, 
Okay, now we go to our rear shocks. I do not know why we have these different spacers. I don't think it has anything to do with clearancing. I think it has to do with the angle of the shock absorber and that having something to do with handling. I don't know what that is though. Um, I'll try to look into that at some point, see if I can get a, uh, an ex explanation. I mean, you definitely have to have a certain amount of clearance for these shock absorbers or they will, you know, chafe against the uh, carbon fiber. But why we have a different setup front and rear, I do not know. And again, I suspect that there's a handling consideration there. I really cannot wait to run this. It seems like a really nice car. It's funny that I'm just getting around to building this as the new year model car is coming out. Now, part of that has to do with uh, the virus, as it were, um, because uh, the uh, people at Hoodie said that they, um, the fact that racing basically stopped for about a year gave them time to experiment and that's when they were able to develop this uh, this new molding technology where they're molding carbon fiber and, and rubber parts, and excuse me, carbon fiber and plastic together. And uh, so that's why they're making this sudden uh, change up. So now it is time to do final body fitting. And trim the posts as needed. I'll make sure I've got the right ones. These are all the same size. Looks good. Okay, so let's try hanging the body. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Give that a try and see how it looks. One, two, three, four. I'm just gonna do a pair, one left, one right, to see if they, how it fits before I go on to the next. These are really easy to use. You just slide the pin through so it's halfway equal on both sides. And then you snap these down onto either side of the pin. Okay, they both need to come down one. So the front is in the fifth hole and the rear is in the fourth. One, two, three, four, five. 
Let's do a confirmation on that. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, now something that's important is that you make your holes a little bit larger than they need to be. You, the last thing you want is for these things to be really tight. We've gone through a lot of effort to make sure that the car has a certain amount of flexibility to it. And the sticker's peeling a little bit. Um, you want You want the body to be able to move a little bit and you want it to be able to flex. You don't you want, don't want it to try to control the chassis. Do you find these videos to be helpful, useful to you? Then please help me keep this channel going by donating. Click the link up here and you can donate safely through PayPal on either a one-time or a monthly basis, your choice. So now I can trim down these body posts. And it looks like I can't get to the bottom one, but I can get to the one above it. But that's going to hold it down. That's too much. Okay, happiness is an almost complete car. Now it's time to put it on the tuning rack. And, uh, but there's a few things that need to be done first. Like I've got uh, those body mount, the stops, those need to be dealt with. So let's go ahead and get into that now, I might as well mark these for trimming let's see so I'm going to trim between two and three and between one and two. Okay, so these guys can come up probably almost to their maximum, considering the height of this body. I'm gonna try moving them all the way up. Tighten them back down. So now let's have a look underneath. They are nowhere near the body. So I don't think they're really gonna come into play with this particular body. Um, maybe a more proper touring car body might have an issue with that, but this one does not. So. See, one of the things is when you're racing on asphalt, you need to leave a little more room than you might otherwise if you were 
running on indoor carpet, you would slam the body as low as le is legal. So. Uh, this is a bitty design body in case you didn't notice from the various stickers. Um, like bitty design, they make some really nice bodies. I'm really pleased with them. Okay, um, okay, next step is gonna be, ah, yeah, things to do on the body. I've got some special tape that will strengthen the body without substantially adding weight. Go ahead and pause for a moment. I'm gonna have to order more of this. Um, I'm trying to remember where I got it. Um, it's basically a really thin aluminum tape and it's great for reinforcing the body where the tires might impact. goes around shapes really well. And what I do is I cut equal sized pieces of it, a few pieces at a time. Sometimes I do multiple layers uh, for like short course trucks and stuff, but uh, for this, for this I'm just gonna bang my head into the camera. Um, for this doing it uh, right above the tire should be plenty. Think we're gonna have any clearance issues back there may not even have them in the front but better safe than sorry yeah it can if it were to thoroughly collapse the suspension. I'm going to put a couple small pieces back here just because. It's, it's not even near the thickness of the paper that it is backed up onto. If that gives you an idea. But that will protect the... Uh, paint from getting worn through by the tire if it makes any contact. Okay, that's done. So now it's time for tuning. And to 
do that, we need a battery that we're going to be running. So we have the right weight. Now, the club that I race at, this isn't like, you know, high sports. So um, they really don't bother to tech the cars at all. Uh, I've never seen anybody's car be checked for weight. So I'm not going to worry about adding tungsten weights and things like that to make the minimum allowable weight for uh, sports car GT cause, or US GT because no one else is going to be doing it. Um, I'm just putting the ground wire in here, A, to keep it all from flopping around, and B, just so that if anything touches, we're grounded. So let me get out the tuning board. Move some stuff out of the way. Keep these out in case I need to make any tuning adjustments that require spacers. Set all those extra screws aside. I'm not going to need the manual for this portion, so I can go ahead and close this up. All I'm going to be doing is using the setup sheets and adjusting toe, ride height, and whatnot. Unfortunately, the, uh, the 110 for touring cars that has these for the rear as well as the front was unavailable. In fact, it seems to be sold out almost indefinitely. Every time uh, I see it, it's sold out. Uh, so I'll just have to make do, maybe, you know, switch front to rear, but um, I'll get everything measured out in the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.